created a high-speed toolpath around my three parts to quickly remove a lot of material but the tool is larger than this internal radius so areas like this won't be cleaned up as well as they could be. To fix that I'm going to add what's called a remachining toolpath. So from the drop-down menus I'm going to select toolpath, contour, I'm going to switch to construction plane chaining, do partial chaining and I'm going to chain my three profiles Each time I chain the profiles, I'm going to chain them in the same direction. I'm going to end the chain after each one. So I've chained my three profiles. I'm going to accept my selection. In the cut parameters, I'm going to tell it it's a remachining operation and that it should look at the rough tool diameter or the previous operation or all previous operations. And we get a little graphics here showing how it's changed. Now in this case I don't want the previous operation because the previous operation was to create a stock model. I can choose all previous operations or I can enter the roughing tool diameter of a half inch. So I'll enter the roughing tool diameter of a half inch. I want to leave the same amount of material on the walls as I did in the rough. So that was 50 thou and 50 thou on the floors. So now I'm going to go back and I'm going to select my tool. So I'm going to select the tool from the library, go into the filter. I'm going to look for a flat end mill whose diameter is less than, and I'm going to right click in the field for the tool size, choose diameter of an arc and select one of these arcs from one of the three parts so that I get a tool smaller than this so it can actually get in there and clean things up. I'll go OK. I'll choose the quarter inch end mill. It's warning me one exists. Do I want to add another one? I'll say yes. So I'm going to set some appropriate speeds and feeds for my cutter, cutter type and material. Always enable rapid retract. I'll set the plunge rate up to a much higher amount, about half the feed rate. And I'll make a comment. I'll go back to the cut parameters. So again, I've told it to remachine and look at the geometry based on the previous tool diameter to leave 50 thou as I did with the previous tool. The clearance is how much the cutter should approach from the area it has to machine and the remachining tolerance will affect how closely it looks at the material. So it's going to look at everything within 5% of the tool diameter or 25 thou material thickness. So if there's less than 25 thou material that the previous tool didn't clean up it may ignore it. The smaller I make this number the longer it'll take to calculate the toolpath. If I turn on the display stock, it's easier to show you what will happen with that. And I would encourage you not to turn it on. I'll come back in a minute and shut it off. I don't want dev cuts. I'm going to accept the defaults lead in, lead out, unless there's an issue. I don't want to break through in this case, and I don't need multi passes. I'll go to my linking parameters. I prefer absolute. Top of stock is zero. I'll turn the flood coolant on. I'll accept these selections. So when I enabled the checkbox back in the tool parameters, this is what it does. So it's asking me to verify that's where the previous tool cleaned up. Okay. One more time, it's saying this is the machinable area it should calculate this new tool path from. And then it says if you want to compute the remaining stock. So if you look closely, you can see it's still got yellow lines here in these corners. That's where it's going to clean up. And you just press enter. And you need to do this to keep confirming each part until you get through it. We can see our cut lines here. So if I go back into the parameters now, to my cut parameters, uncheck display stock. And if I make a change, 
change this to 2.5%. Say OK. When I regenerate the toolpath, I won't be asked to verify the remaining stock, what it's being computed from. So now that I have my toolpath, I'll go ahead and simulate it and look for issues. So I'll go into the Verify Simulation window. My stock model has opened up, showing you can see the corners is the main focus where the extra material is. The lead in and lead out may cost me some issues, so that's what I want to watch for. If it hits the other parts, I'll hit the play. And you notice I do hit the other parts, so I'm going to need to fix this up. I'll close the simulator, go back into the parameters, to the lead in and lead out. And first I'll just shut off the tangent line for both the arc in and the arc out. And if that doesn't do it, I'll change the arc. For now, I'll say OK, regenerate the toolpath, and re-verify it. And I'll continue to edit this until I'm happy with the toolpath, and then I'll save my work.